Dr. Rana, <clears throat> uh, you have been a veteran and you are about 70 years old. Uh, you have seen everything from cop for being a mentor to corporate life to, to being a professor and startups. Now, what do you enjoy the most? Uh, yes, Amit, uh, I'm looking at the previous speakers uh, and uh, these uh, patterns are, uh, that they're describing are so commonplace. And uh, in, uh, in very simple uh, terms, I describe this as curse of humanity. That we have so many questions and we know very well, the thinking people, that there are no answers to certain questions, but we cannot stop seeking answers from that. And that is the curse of humanity, okay? We believe that we have a higher purpose in life, uh, but believe me, there is none, okay? So in simple terms, uh, what I found is that uh, at any point in time, there is something that you are thinking that you should be doing, and there is actually something that you're doing. If there is a disconnect between uh, these two and over a period that disconnect grows, no matter what you do, okay? Uh, this, that is the, uh, the chaos theory. So when the disconnect grows, you tend to be unhappy, right? So you want to bring them together and you're trying hard and you can't bring them together, right? Uh, and that is the struggle. But what happens is uh, that uh, what you are thinking that is not static, that changes over a period of time. Today you are interested in something, today uh, A gives you pleasure, A gives you happiness, tomorrow B gives you pleasure and happiness, okay? These things are not constant, okay? So if these things are not constant, the mechanisms for aligning them are not constant. So it's a continuous effort that you're doing. And the only way to have that uh, balance is to, just watch this drama that goes on, that this is what we are, this is what humanity is, this will go on. So if you create some distance from that phenomena and let things happen, okay? Uh, I'm not going to get rid of this struggle. It's not going to go away, but I can be less impacted at certain level by this struggle and take this as a normal struggle. So that's what I found. So I'm able to uh, keep a distance from uh, uh, what I actually do, and uh, uh, as, a, as a person who is impacted by that, I'm not too much impacted by what I do right now. Uh, another, another thing that I have is, no matter what I say there, it's, it's not correct, okay? The moment I utter it, it becomes incorrect. Things are so, changing so dynamically that I cannot... Uh, uh, claim that uh, that something is true, something is right, because it is not, okay? Uh, uh, if it is right at the moment, it won't be right at the next moment. So it's, it's such a fleeting thing uh, that's going on. And, and that's what there is to it. Uh, you know, uh, when, when, when you describe people by their resumes, their uh, past, uh, you know, achievements or uh, failures or whatever, to me, that doesn't uh, make any sense. If our past is defining our future uh, or creating a perception about us, that to me is a big bottleneck. And that's the issue exactly we deal in corporate decision-making. When we are data-driven, you are looking at the past. Uh, if past is limiting our future or describing us, then there is no scope for innovation. There is no scope for creativity. Uh, there is not sc no scope for evolution. And evolution is going to happen no matter what there. Uh, you can be burdened with the past and just stay there or uh, just go with the flow with the evolution and don't be burdened with the past. Absolutely. And only way that you can achieve that is by creating a distance Absolutely. between what is going on and... Uh, That's uh, a very important point, Dr. Rada. I think... To, yeah. Change is the only constant, we all know that, and things will keep changing. And people do things first, and then they justify it. And your past is not, is not gonna define your future. I think those are very important concepts that Dr. Rana has mentioned. Uh,